Our next speaker is both the busiest person I know and also the calmest person I know. It's amazing how it goes together. He's the founder of four, five, six startups. I really have lost count. He's from the chemistry department. He's a member of the Nano Center. And he's one of the founders of the brand new 3D printing research center. It is my pleasure to invite on stage Professor Shlomo Magdasi. Thank you, Blair. Communication now is very simple and very easy. We all have our smartphones in our pockets. We know now how to listen. We have the ability to read books, to read newspapers. We can print a lot of copies that we can send to many, many people. To those of you who have not such a good memory, uh, it wasn't like that always. Many years ago, a prehistoric man used to express his feelings or to convey messages by cave painting, wall paintings. It took many, many years, it's amazing, only at 1445 that Gutenberg has invented the first printer. He invented the first printer and he also printed the first Bible. After printing that first Bible, there was a spread of information all over the world and communication became much, much simpler and easy. So you could print many copies, many exact copies, we call it hard copies, and deliver it to many, many people. 500 years uh, later, we have many, many printing technologies, more sophisticated than the printer that you see there. Uh, for example, all the huge billboards that you see on the street are printed in a few seconds. Now, we all have at home printers which cost maybe less than $50, and uh, the printing ability is really very open to uh, all of us. So, what is common for paint and ink and uh, printing is ink, paint, it's chemicals. How do we make an ink? We're in a small audience, so just keep it in secret. It's very, very simple. You take pigments, these parts that can be minerals, that you can dig in your garden, or you can, be, you can take a tomato. You put it in a grounding machine, exactly like a food processor that you have in the kitchen, mix it, shake it, and you get particles that are the ink, or the paint. So this is a can of this uh, paint. We are working on a lot of projects which are related to inks and paints, but we started to think, can we bring additional function to the ink? A function that will be something beyond color. To remind you, for about 500 years, people used ink and paint only to bring color to a page or to a wall. We want to bring functionality beyond color. For example, the can that you saw on the right side was a black paint that we developed that has a unique capability of absorbing all the sunlight and get the sunlight converted into heat. So we license the technology to a company called BrightSource. It's in Jerusalem and in the US. The company is producing electricity by using our black paint that absorbs all the sunlight, converts it into heat, then the heat makes steam and the steam generates electricity. So now in California, the largest thermosolar plant in the world is using our black paint, which is on top of this tower, and produces electricity for over 100,000 homes in California. So this is a functional paint. What about ink? I work quite a lot with nanomaterials. Nanomaterial is in the size range of a millionth of a millimeter, very, very small. One hair fiber that I don't have is about 30,000 nanometers. So we talk about small particles, they start to change their properties simply because of the change of the size. We, I teach chemistry and uh, we work on uh, making nanomaterials and one of the activities that we do is make silver and gold nanoparticles. Exactly the same way that the Roman used to stain glass. But we thought maybe we can use these particles to make electrical circuits. So we used silver nanoparticles that can be printed to make 
printed circuit boards, which we all have in our computers, in our smartphone, in any electrical appliances. So, this technology was licensed recently to a company, startup company called Nano Dimension. It is already on the stock exchange and its aim is to print circuit boards for the electronic industry all over the world. Uh, it is planned that within a few uh, months uh, there will be the first printer in the market. And of course, with our Hebrew University Inc. inside. We can make a lot of functional printing. For example, we can print solar cells. We can print smart windows in which you click a button and then the window becomes from transparent to opaque and keep the heat out or in depending what you want. We can print touch screens or temperature sensor that you can stick on your, on your uh, skin. So this is 2D functional printing. 2D functional printing means printing on flat surfaces. You can bend it but it is still a flat surface. What about going into non-flat substrate? So we go to 3D printing. Conventional making of objects is very tedious. You take a material, you carve out of it some pieces, you shape it, you grind it, you glue it, you sand it, etc. While printing, inkjet printing or digital printing, 3D printing, you simply print exactly 2D but again and again and again. So you build a whole 3D structure. In this case, uh, this is a printed, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. In this case, this is printed. Oh. Okay. In this case, we have printed uh, 3D uh, structures that can be made in a second. All you need to do is simply click a button after you have the model in the uh, computer. What is it good for? A variety of applications. The economists term this uh, field as the third industrial revolution uh, because you can actually change the way of manufacturing objects. This is very simple and you can make objects that were not possible to make before. Which objects? For example, artificial organs or soft robot or teeth or an ear or we don't know what can be the future. So we talk about 2D printing, 3D printing, what's next? We established recently a new center at the Hebrew University for functional and 3D printing. And this center is aimed at breaking boundaries of printing uh, field. So I'll show you in a few slides how can we go even farther than 3D printing? Of course, this center is based on joint activities of experts in different fields. For example, we collaborate with Oded with his nanocellulose for making 3D uh, objects. Or people from biology, medicine, computers, chemistry, physics, and so can collaborate in this uh, field. Here is an example of 4D printing. This is not a time machine. This is a 3D object that can start changing its shape after being exposed to temperature, time, humidity, whatever. What you see here is a medical stand that you can print, put in your body, and after it reaches the, your body temperature, it will expand or shrink, depending on your program. This is a shape memory polymer that we invented, and imagine that it can release a drug upon need. The field of 3D printing and 4D printing of our polymer, uh, shape memory polymer, attracted a lot of scientists but also artists. So, an art student from Bezalel took our materials and the printing technology and used it for making movable uh, jewelry. So, you can take your ring, put it in the sunlight, and it starts to change its shape. So, we have 2D printing, 3D printing, 4D printing. What's next? I really don't know. <laughs> we should fly with our imagination and hopefully we can print our dreams. Thank you.